Jeremiah chapter 1. And we're down starting in verse 11. And uh, well, first part, first 10 verses, uh, God appears to Jeremiah and, and tells him, uh, I want you to, you're going you're gonna to preach and you're, gonna, and you're going to give the people my word. And, and, and God tells him before he before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And tells, tells Jeremiah not to be afraid, don't be afraid, uh, just be, be bold, get out there, I'm going to give you the words to speak. Okay? So, so if, you're, if you think you're not a good speaker, you will be, because you'll have my words, God says. Don't be afraid of their faces. Okay? And then, verses 9 and 10, the Lord put forth his hand and touched Jeremiah's mouth. Okay? And, uh, and Lord, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth, and I, I have this day set thee over the nations. Okay? He's going to go out over the nations and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, root out, kind of, you know, like, like in... Uh, tearing up trees, to pull down and to destroy, throw down, to build, and to plant. Okay. Uh, down in verse 11, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me. Okay. God is, is getting him started on, on, on what, you know, on, on his word and what Jeremiah is going to preach. He asked Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what seest thou? What do you see out there? And God gives Jeremiah a vision. And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Okay, a rod. This, this would be, you know, you, you can think of uh, a, a, sh a shepherd's staff, if you will. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, God gave to Moses, uh, you know, a, a shepherd's staff. And he turned that staff into, you know, a, a snake for the, for the, but, uh, but th this is kind of the picture here, uh, a rod, this shepherd's staff, but it's, it's out of almond wood. Now, I, I don't do, I don't know too much about almond trees. Do they, do they have straight wood that, or that you could get a, you know, a shepherd's staff out of? I'm assuming they probably would. You know, since this is what this is the vision that God is giving to him. So, uh, you know, so shepherd's staff of almond wood, and they're fairly long, you know, and <clears throat> the the actually the, the shepherd's crooks had a you know had a hook on the end. So this may be the you know similar picture. So, and and okay, so what what is this? You know, of course there are again. Pick, pick your commentator or whoever, uh, you know, what, what this staff, rod of an almond tree might signify. Well, you could see it as, okay, uh, God, like a traveler, staff in hand, you know, walking stick or staff in hand, going out, you know, after his sheep, uh, uh, was, was just about to set forth upon his journey, if you will, of vengeance. That's, that's one way to look at it. That, that that's, sounds like you know, God going forth and, and, and using, if you will, Jeremiah as, as his, you know, you could, could also think, you know, here in this picture, Jeremiah being the, the staff sending forth Jeremiah, okay, a traveler, Going out to set about his journey, okay, but uh, and, but apparently the the the, the word for almond, uh, <clears throat> you know, the Hebrew word for almond, comes from a a, a, a root uh, signifying to be awake, not woke, but be awake. You know, apparently the almond tree uh, blossoms 
about this time of year, uh, I'm assuming over there in, in the Middle East, the almond trees, and I don't know if they're blooming any, wherever, and where do they grow them? Here in California? California. Yeah. They, they would probably be blooming down there, but they bloom early, like in January, okay, early winter, uh, you know, while the other trees, the other lazy trees are out there still sleeping. Okay? Uh, and, and, and it's a, a, a picture of activity. Okay? We've got an almond tree blooming picture of activity. Something's happening. Okay? So, uh, so he sees this rod of uh, an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. Okay? Now God didn't, God didn't tell him the interpretation. God showed him this almond tree, and these, these two interpretations are, you know, come from commentators and, and like that. So, but, anyway, then said the Lord unto me, gives him two visions. Well, he, thou hast well seen, I will hasten my word to perform it. Okay? I'm, I'm going to, again, God preparing for a journey that he's ready to start. Uh, God uh, uh, getting, you know, activity, getting something going here. And he's getting it going with Jeremiah. And he's, he's, he's hurrying up his word to Jeremiah to get it done. Get her done, Jeremiah. That's, you know, that's what you're, you're going, you're, you're, you're going on a journey and you're going to have a staff, and you're going to preach my word, God says, and I'm going to hurry up because, okay, you've got a short amount of time, Jeremiah. And remember, this, this is still a, a few years before King Nebuchadnezzar moves down and, and takes over and the, you know, starts the, the, the 70 years of captivity. So this is a few years, several years before then, 629, and it, uh, we go uh, 605 BC. 629 BC is about when when Jeremiah performed, you know, is, starts his ministry, and 605 BC is this Battle of Carchemish, where where the uh, uh, armies of Nebuchadnezzar come through, and you know he's on his way to to uh, Egypt. And Israel and Jerusalem are right in the way. Collateral damage. So that's 14 years. So, you know, you've got a, got a short amount of time to perform my task for you, Jeremiah. Okay? And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? Okay, now he sees this almond staff. What, what, what do you see this time in this vision? And I said, I see a seething pot. Okay, a seething pot. You, you can think of, now, uh, a cauldron. Okay, uh, what, what my picture of a cauldron is, is, is a, is, you know, large black uh, iron pot, if you will, uh, you know, I can I picture them with a handle on top, uh, but you know, and, and you can also picture them. Well, oh, Full huh? Full of beans. Full of beans. Yes, but this this one would be, you know, large enough. Uh, well, uh, like uh, okay, in the uh, mess halls in the Navy, I did when, when boot camp, I did. You know, we, 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 our, my company, boot camp company had, had, uh, you know, about a two week stint of, of KP duty there in the mess hall. And in, in the mess halls, they, they had, they were, they were copper, these huge copper pots, you know, uh, gas fired copper pots that, that they would, uh, you know, cook enough soup or beans or whatever to feed, you know, several hundred. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see how much, how many. Anyway, 
several hundred, you know, recruits there in the mess hall. And, uh, you know, that's, that's another, pick. but anyway, large enough to feed a lot of people, okay? And it is, see, the, it's boiling. This pot is boiling. Whatever is being cooked in there, the water is being boiled. Now, uh, also, uh, in, in, those, in those days, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the time, you know, the, the folks there in, in that area, the Jews and, and everybody else, you know, they would cook their dinner in it. They'd, they'd, they, instead of uh, uh, microwaving their, their roast beef or, or, or you know, uh, barbecuing their roast beef, they would seethe it or cook it, boil it in a big pot. That's what seethe means? That, yeah, yeah. That's what seethe means. That, that, that probably answers Jerry's question also. You just answered Jerry's future question. <laughs> yeah, to see it, so to I cook it. <clears throat> yeah, but <laughs> but you know it, it would be uh, well like like you would do oh like you would do a, a, a roast in your crock pot, a similar thing, okay? Except it's electric. You don't have to put it on the but. You know that's that's so that's that's what he sees here, is a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. Okay. Now here's an interesting little statement. You've got a a round pot. What what which side of that round pot would you consider the face of it? Huh? The pouring spout, okay. So, so the, now we don't, again, the, the picture we might have would be an actual kind of spout <coughs> off the side, <coughs> up, up at the top, you know, would, would, would have this, this kind of, you know, anyway. You, you know what I'm talking about? Whatever side the soup may have. Yeah, whatever side the <laughs> Yeah. But it but it's you know this kind of the face thereof is toward the north. So now also okay, here, here's another part of the picture. Now again, like I you know, I see them with with a with a, a handle that they would hang over, you know, some sort of something above the fire. But uh, supposing I suppose that it's possible that the pot is sitting directly on the fire, you know, on a, as, as the fire is burning or on the coals, okay, sitting there, and, 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 the, and as the fire is burning down, then it might lean, if you will, tip, you know, if it burns fast on one side and slow on the other side, Trying to get, you know, tr I'm trying to get this picture myself with this face toward the north, okay? so that, so that, you know, it's it's now leaning over in the fire with its, you know, with its open mouth, it's facing toward the north. Its open mouth will be facing that way, yeah, <laughs> toward that way. Since that's north over there, okay, and and you know that's so face is toward the north, okay. So and and if it you know gets too far over, it would you know eventually uh, fall out. You know, cauldrons boiling furious, furiously, uh, and it would you know eventually spill out, okay. But the Lord said, at verse 14, Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. So now we've, we've got this boiling pot. And now, is, 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 the, the, is this boiling pot, is this referring to 
Israel, or is this referring to, okay, the Babylonian Empire, which will be coming down from the north? You, you can go either, kind of either way, you know, who, who is the, the boiling pat, pot is the, is the Babylonian Empire coming down? Okay. That's, that's sort of the picture that I'm getting here because out of the north, remember, uh, when Nebuchadnezzar, well, first of all, you know, we've got the, the Assyrian army has already come in and taken over the northern ten tribes, you know, uh, about 80, 90 years earlier. And, and now the, the, the uh, Babylonian Empire under Nebuchadnezzar uh, is going to come down, uh, and actually he he's going over, he conquers Assyria, and he's coming down, and it's all kind of, you know, nor north of, of Israel. So he's coming down from the north to attack, well, like I said, the Battle of Carchemish. He's coming down to, to he's eventually going to Egypt, and, and you know, get rid of Egypt out of the picture with Jerusalem and Judah in the way. And, and that, I think that, as far as I can tell, that's, that's the picture here. Out of the north, and evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. And of course, the inhabitants of the land, that refers to Israel, that refers to Judah and Benjamin, the, the remaining two tribes, because everybody else has already been assimilated. You know, they were assimilated into the Assyrian army, and then Nebuchadnezzar of the Babylonians assimilated everybody uh, from Assyria in. And you know, that's kind of the way it goes. You know, these empires, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, they, they sort of come in, conquer everybody, assimilate everybody, and that's sort of what our wonderful friend over there in Russia is doing, you know, go in, conquer, and hey, oh, he, he's coming, he is coming from the north, sort of, isn't he? Yeah. There we go. Conquering them. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but breaking forth upon, and, and this, this, again, this, this picture, this boiling pot, tipping over and spilling the, its contents all over. You know, you have a, a large boiling pot that tips over and you've got a big mess, right? That's what's going to happen here, according to the Lord said unto me, out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. And, uh, and one thing we, have to, we, we need to remember also is this, this evil breaking forth, are they're all uh, heathens, non-believers, okay? They're all idol worshipers, but God is using them to take care of Israel's sins, okay? They're, and it's breaking forth upon all the inhabitants. For, for lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, again, you know, all these other nations have been assimilated and, and brought in, and, and if, you, if you want to survive, you know, the conquering, well, you, you join in with the conqueror. And that's what uh, Brother Putin over there is wanting to do, is assimilate and make all of these Ukrainians uh, you know, hey, if you want to live, you 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 just give up and quit fighting, and and you become nice little Russians or nice little Babylonians, and you go by what we say. Okay? That's that's a, you know, it's it's wonderful that we can get all of these <coughs> wonderful pictures of what's of what's going on in the Bible out of exactly what's going on today in the world. Wow. Okay. So all the, all the families, all of these other nations, 
of the kingdoms of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem. Okay. You know, uh, usually, yeah, this would, you know, all these, all these kings of all these other nations, but Nebuchadnezzar and all those guys, okay, they're going to come, and, and they're going to, you know, first of all, surround Jerusalem, and then, then they, they will be uh, sitting at the gates, and that's a lot of times in, in, in those days, that's when the, when the judges would sit. They would sit at the gates okay, of the city to, to pass judgment and to hold court. Okay? And that's the picture here. Everyone, his throne, all of them together and separately at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem and against all the walls round about, thereof round about and against all the cities of Judah. Okay. Their judgment is coming. Uh, God is telling Jeremiah, and you're going to go out and tell my people, and you're going to be bold doing it, and I will give you the words, and we will stop right there. Oh, well, I guess we could do, go down to the paragraph, verse 16. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness. Okay who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods. This is directed specifically, you know, Israel, you aren't paying attention to, to my prophets, and you, you aren't paying attention to the past, you aren't paying attention to history, and, uh, and, you, and you're worshiping all those idols and profaning his temple and, uh, and, and worship the works of their own hands. Yeah, here we go. You know, you talk about, oh, you know, pastor teaches about uh, uh, you're not going to get to heaven by doing works. Well, that's what they're doing. You know, they, they, they're thinking, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a good little, you know, I'm, I'm a good boy. That's what I, you know, before somebody explained to me, before past, it was actually Pastor Preston, previous pastor here, explained to me the gospel, okay, you know, I was a good kid when I grew up. I didn't, you know, rob any banks. I didn't, I didn't, you know, cuss or swear or anything like that. Uh, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't even do the, the stereotypical Navy things, sailor things. <laughs> and when I got in the Navy, I didn't, I didn't do that stuff, you know. So, hey, I'm a good guy. Hey, I should... Why, why should, I should get to heaven, right? I'm a good guy. Well, it doesn't work, and it, wasn't gonna, it didn't work for, for Jerusalem and Judah, and it doesn't work for us, 